Hello everybody and welcome to our Pilates for Monday. Hello to everybody. I'm here in the UK and I can see from the chat you've all seen how hot it is. We're actually going into record temperatures here, um, the highest ever on record in the UK. Uh, up to 41 degrees and you know we're not set up for the hot weather in England all we have here is seasons and a lot of rain and a little bit of sunshine in the summer but it's so unbelievably hot today so just to give you a little bit of background I have got a little air conditioning unit so I've managed to cool the room down but I will be taking it a little bit easier today just because it's really extreme, the temperature for us over here. Anyway, I want to say hello. Welcome to everybody, especially if you're new to my live sessions. We're going to do 30 minutes of Pilates today. I think I'll probably give you a mixture of standing and mat work. And then after that, if you've got any questions or you want to say hello, then I will come back to the chat and I will talk to you after, okay? But today is all about focusing on relieving pain in the neck, the shoulders, the upper body, the upper back, all right? So let's begin. So I'm going to start standing, all right? Let's have you standing up with your feet hip width apart, Tongue is in and just your arms down by your side, okay? We're going to start with the shoulders. So we're going to bring them up, back, and around. 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 One more time. Up, back, and round. Now from here, we're going to have the arms slightly out to the side. Can you see? Backs of the hands towards me. And what you're going to do is take a breath in. And on the out breath, we're going to turn the hands, turn the arms, feeling the rotation going all the way up the arms. And then at the end of the movement, you're going to squeeze your shoulder blades together at the back like this. You're then going to release and bring them back. So deep breath in, exhale, rotating the arms, squeezing the shoulder blades and coming back. All right. And again, exhale, open, squeeze and coming back. Exhale, open, squeeze and coming back. Good. Exhale, open and squeeze. And coming back, one more. Exhale, open and squeeze. Inhale to come back. Now, a little exercise for the neck. So I'm going to go sideways so you can see. So this is what we call head forward posture, which is very hard on our neck, causes a lot of pain in the neck and shoulders. So I want you to get your finger, put it on your chin. And now I want you to pull your chin in away from your finger. So you can feel that elongation at the back of the neck there. And look at that distance that you've pulled away. And now let everything go back to normal. So just let that head drop forward. And then draw away. So think of drawing your chin away from your finger. And back. Being mindful of not lifting the chin. So we're attracting the chin. If anything, slightly drawing down. So you're looking straight ahead as if you're looking at yourself in a mirror. All right, drawing back. And release. Drawing back. And release. One more, drawing back. And release. Now take that hand down and see if you can find that position drawing back so you can feel how you are working a little lower down in your spine sort of somewhere around here you might feel that pull now keep that lovely posture and let's try and take the chin to the chest without the head going forward so we're tucking the chin down and then you're going to bring it back up tucking the chin down and bringing back up, good. Tucking the chin down. And lifting up. 
tucking the chin down and lifting up and tucking the chin down and lifting up. So from here, we're going to tilt our head over to the right. Now I want you to reach the opposite arm out. Imagine you are reaching out in the opposite direction. You can feel that lovely stretch right here, going into the trapezius, upper trapezius, and then bring everything back. So we start with a little tilt of the head, then reach the arm out. Imagine someone gently pulling on your wrist so you can feel that stretch and come back. Other way, little tilts, reaching out, stretch, and coming back. Little tilts, reaching out, and coming back. Now let's add to that, we're gonna do a little stretch. We're gonna reach out. Now I want you to rotate your head so you're looking away from that outstretched hand. Oh, I've got a click there in my neck. And come back and up. Same thing the other way. So taking the head over, reach the hand down and out. And then let's turn the head away. That's it, good. Coming back. Don't worry if you feel or hear any clicking in your body. That's all good. All right, so taking the head over. Reaching out, turning to look down. Good. Did you hear that? My neck is clicking a lot today. And up. And one more time. Over. Reaching out, turning. Good. And back. And lifting up. Okay, so I want you to bring your hands up like so. Okay, and I want you to widen your feet. Okay, so you've got a nice steady stance. We're going to take the arms out. So really reach them out as far back as those elbows will go and then bring them in front. So we're going to open and back. Open and back. So add your breathing because that breathing will really help engage your core. But it also help you relax into the movements and help release that tension. Open and back. Open and back. Open and back. Open and hold. Now we're gonna add a rotation of the upper spine. So you're gonna rotate your rib cage, try and bring this arm around without the hips moving. Try and reach the other elbow back and come back to the center. Other way, rotate and back. So you can feel this, it's almost like, you know how you like wring out a flannel? You know, you're doing that kind of movement, that's what you're doing. You're wringing out the center of the body and back. So this is mobilizing your spine. It's gonna feel wonderful when you finish and rotate and back. Now we're gonna take the weight over as we do it this time and come back, other way, over and back. And allow your hip to turn a little bit now. So we're gonna get a little bit of work in the glutes as well, rotate and back. Rotate and back, rotate and back. Two more, good, and rotate. And that, well done. Bring those hands down. We're going to just, I'm just gonna turn a little bit sideways for you. Okay, because what we're gonna do now is we're going to bend the knees a little bit. We're going to tilt the pelvis forward or tilt the hips forward. All right, we wanna stay in pretty much in a neutral spine there. All right, and the hand furthest away, you're gonna put that across the front knee, the knee closest to me. And then the other arm, you're going to lift up. You're going to keep this shoulder down. And we're going to press into that leg and try and get a nice rotation through the rib cage. That's it, good. And then you're going to come down, you're going to change sides. So take that hand over, take the other hand in the air. Make sure your shoulder's down. All right, and then we're going to rotate as far as we can. 
Good. And come down. Let's try it one more time each side. So take that hand over, take the arm out to the side, and then press into that leg so you can rotate. We want this shoulder down. It's very easy to lift it like this. So really drop it down. Good. And back one more time the other way. Reaching out, rotate. and come back. Well done. Take a breath in and just let your body calm down towards the floor. Inhale there and as you exhale, pull the tummy muscles in, tucking under, unraveling that spine to come up. So we're going to roll down, inhale, exhale, let's take the chin to the chest, pull the tummy inwards and up, Soften the knees and gently rolling down towards the floor. So this is all about control through all those muscles. Inhale. Exhale, pull the tummy muscles in and slowly come back up. We'll do one more. Inhale. Exhale, chin to the chest. Rolling down. All the way down. Good. Inhale. And exhale, coming up. Now I want you to bend your knees, hands on your knees, and come back to that nice position there. All right, and the arm that's in front, so back arm's going to stay on the leg. And one arm, this front one, the one closest to me, you're going to reach it out. You're going to check that you're not tensing your neck. So think about dropping the shoulder down. And if you need to, you can have the arm lower down. And then you're just going to take the arm out to the side till you feel the stretch and bring it back. Take it out and bring it back. So this time we're not turning the spine. So we're getting more of a stretch in the front of your shoulders. This is an area that gets very, very tight, especially when you're on your computer a lot or rounding your body forward. Two, one, and come back. Let's reach the other arm out. Same thing. Take it out to the side and back. Side and back. Side and back. Good. Four, four, three, two, one, now reach the arm behind you, reach this front arm behind you, interlace the fingers, reach out and see if you can take your body forward and take the arms overhead, release the hands, take a deep breath in and come all the way up. All right, let's come down onto the floor now. Okay, now we're gonna do a few little stretches here and then to go into a little bit more of our traditional Pilates work. So I'd like you to sit on the floor. If this is uncomfortable, and I appreciate it can be for some people, sit on a cushion, two cushions, a yoga block, whatever you've got to hand, all right? And then the first thing we're gonna do is take the head over to your right. We're gonna to rotate to look down. We're going to circle the head this time down to the center, over to the other side, turn the face to the front, and come up. Then back the other way. We're going to tilt. We're going to turn. We're going to roll the head down, around to the other side, face to the front, and up. Once more each way, tilt and turn. And roll that head down, round to the side, face to the front, and up, tilt, and turn, and roll that head down, round to the side, face to the front, and up. Now I want you to take your right hand, lift it straight up in front of your face, and take the hand over, to take hold of the back of your head, feel that round part of your spine, okay? Now we're gonna turn our chest towards this right knee, and then you're gonna very gently pull on that head, taking the chin down to the chest, and this time we're gonna hold it here, and just take some deep breaths. Inhale through the nose, 
exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. One more time, deep breath in. And if it feels all right, you can leave you just gently pull a little bit more. Good. And you're going to lift that head up and rotate to the front. And let's switch hands. So the hands in the front, yes, it's coming up and over like you were putting on a helmet or something, yeah? Holding the back of the head. All right, now let's turn our chest the other way. So we're looking in the direction of this knee. Okay, take a breath in and then exhale gently pulling down. And I promise you this feels amazing after. Okay, you might find this side easier or it's more challenging. We're just going to hold that stretch there. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And one more. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Gently bringing that head up, back to center and down. All right, now we're going to try and do a little movement with the ribs. We haven't done this one before. So think of a circular movement, okay? So watch me, watch my ribs. We're going to go out to the side, forward, over to the left and back. All right, so it's a circular movement. You should feel your whole rib cage moving. All right, for some people this is very difficult, particularly if you've got lots of tension, so that's why we're doing it. All right, so going around, four, four, three, two, and one. Now we're gonna try the other way. So we're going this way, forward, around and back. That's it, good, around, around. So today is all about releasing tension in the body, yeah? The more relaxed your body is, the more fit you can become, yes? So you can't get fit through having a very tense uh, mind and body. So we're going to go three, two, one. Well done. Now we're going to do a little shoulder movement. This is in one of my... Ex uh, one of my videos for shoulder pain, I need to turn around so you can see my shoulder. So I'm going to turn uh, my back to you. Apologize for that, but it's the best way. Okay, now what we're going to do is take the right arm out to the side. So you're going to mirror me. And we're going to try and draw the shoulder blade down and across. Can you see towards the spine? And then we're going to reach it back out. And we're going to try and avoid any tension up here. We want everything down here to be doing the work. So you're going to draw down and across and reaching out. Down and across and out. Down and across and out. Across and out, across and out. One more, across and out. Let's take that arm down and let's do the other side. Are we okay? All right, arm out. So drawing across and out, across and out, across and out. Good. Down and across. And out, across, and out, one more, across, and out. Take that hand down, go back to the other side, this time palm down. So I want you to imagine you're going to press something down. So you're going to draw your shoulder blade across, press down. Now see if you can release the shoulder blade in that position so you can see how it's relaxed and then lift back up. Okay, so we're gonna draw across, keep the shoulder blade where it is, press down, release the shoulder blade, and back up. Two more, draw it across, press down, release, and up. 
and across, press down, release and up. Well done, let's go to the other side. Here we go. So palm down, we're drawing across, press down, release and up, across, press down, release and up, across, press down, release and up, and across, press down, release and up. Wonderful. All right, let's come and lie down on our mats now, okay? So lying all the way down. All right, we're going to bring our arms up in the air. We're going to bring our feet quite close to our bottom. And we're going to do a pelvic curl. So you're going to take a breath in. You're going to exhale to tilt the pelvis. Lift the spine up. And as you lift your hips up, let's reach the arms overhead, but not allow those ribs to open. So you almost want to think of ribs down as arms go over. Then you're going to take a breath in. Exhale, coming all the way down through that spine, feeling that stretch through the body and bring the arms back. Now, if you have shoulder pain with your arms going overhead, don't lift your shoulders or your arms any higher, okay? So take a breath in, exhaling to tilt, roll that spine, uh, spine up. That's it, you can take the arms overhead if that feels okay, inhale. And exhale. Coming back down. Good, we'll do two more deep breath in. Exhaling to tilt. And roll that spine up, taking the arms overhead. Inhale. Exhale. To come back down. And last one, deep breath in. Exhaling to tilt. Roll the spine up, reach those arms overhead. Good. Inhale. And exhale. Coming back down. Well done. So I'd like you to roll onto your front now. All right, we're going to do some movements here to really help with the neck pain. Okay, these are great movements. I do these a lot with people who have got uh, arthritis in the neck and such things. So we're going to start with our feet hip widths apart. And we're going to push into our hands and come onto our elbows. And you're going to have your elbows slightly forward of your shoulder, not too far. Okay, and I want you to let the head just drop down. I want you to let the tummy collapse, the chest collapse, the shoulders collapse, everything. Okay, and we're going to try and teach the back of the body what we want it to do. So first thing I want you to do is just pull your tummy muscles in so you're lifting your tummy away from the mat. Now try and pull your chest bone or your chest away from the mat as well. Now you're going to feel that you might be slightly rounded in that upper back. What I want you to do is keep your tummy away from the mat, keep your chest away from the mat, but now draw your shoulder blades towards each other as we did in that earlier exercise. Hold that position and let's now uncurl the neck. Think of that chin staying in, that eye line going forward. You might find this quite a challenge. This is often where most of us are quite weak in these, this area of the body. Okay, and then just let everything come down to wherever it wants to go and start again. So we pull the tummy in, first of all, press the pelvis forward. We bring the chest up off the mat. We draw our shoulders back. And think of the collarbones opening, shoulder blades trying to draw towards each other, head go forward. Lovely. And then come back down. Let's do that just one more time. So pull your tummy muscles in. So tummy off the mat, chest off the mat. Press into the elbows, shoulders coming towards each other or shoulder blades, collarbones opening coming up. Now, if you can, I want you to press into your hands 
and come up. So a little tricep press up, but shoulders stay down. And then back on the elbows. Good, press up. And come down. So we're trying to hold that lovely extended spinal position. Yeah, we're squeezing our shoulder blades towards each other if we can. If we can't squeeze them, we are just trying to feel that we've engaged there. Keep going for three and two. Good, one more and one. Lovely, come down, all the way down. Fabulous, bring your feet together and bring your arms back. Palms are gonna be facing up, chin down. Imagine you're tucking your chin slightly here. All right, bring your forehead down onto the floor. Leave your arms level with your thighs. They're not resting. They are active, so we're activating the back of the body. Take a breath in, and as you inhale, feel your chest rising off the floor. And then as you exhale, you're going to come back down. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, coming back down. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale back down and inhale lifting up exhale back down well done now bring your elbows around place them down on the floor in case you want your elbows a little lower than your shoulders we're going to do a little a uh, couple of exercises before we finish they're very short and sweet feet apart slightly push your pelvis forward Okay, so we're using our core muscles. We're also releasing the tension here in the back. And then we're going to raise the elbows up off the floor. Reach the arms out, bend, and lower down. We're going to lift, reach, back, and lower. Lift, reach, back, and lower. Lift. Reach back and lower. Lift, reach out. This time, reach the hands behind you. And as you do, try and extend through that spine. Be careful your chin doesn't go forward. Drop your chin down or tuck your chin down. Bend the elbows and come back down. So lift the elbows up, reach the hands out, take the arms back behind you and see if you can extend your spine and the elbows and come down. And one more, lifting up, reach the arms out, circle those arms behind you, lifting up, up, up. Good, bend the elbows, bring the hands under the shoulders, Push yourself up into a kneeling position. Let's do a little cat stretch. So taking a breath in, you're going to exhale, tucking under. Feel that lovely ripple of movement through the body. Inhale. Exhale, going back the other way. Deep breath in. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale back. And last one, deep breath in. Exhale, tucking under. Inhale. And exhale back. Good. And then you're going to come onto your side. So we're going to be sitting up in this position. It's going to finish with a nice side stretch. So take the arm out to the side. Bring the other arm up. Elbow down, and then we're going to rotate around. Come back, push up, take hold of your shin, and let's go into a nice side stretch so you can feel that traction there. Good. And back. And again, over, stretch, lift, and up, and over and 
stretch. This time, take that hand down and straighten your other arm. Okay, so we're now in a nice upright position. We're going to press down into our hands and try and rotate your chest towards the back arm. Okay, and at the same time, draw that shoulder down. That's it, good. And then from there, coming up, changing legs, we'll do that on the other side. Okay, so arm out. Going down, side stretch, lift, take hold of your shin, and stretching over. Good. Down, and stretch, and lift, and over, and last one down, and stretch. Bring that hand around, straighten both your arms, Pull your tummy in and try and turn your chest towards that back arm. And at the same time, we're looking up. So you can feel that real movement in your upper spine. Well done. And then coming up. And there you go. You're all done for today. So well done, everyone. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Do press the like button, please do subscribe. And I have worn this outfit today because I did a really lovely stretch for the lower body on Friday. So you could put the two workouts together and you have a lovely hour of mobility and stretches. All right, and if you wanna have a chat, I shall come and talk to you now. If you need to go, have a great day and I'll see you soon. Well done, everyone. I hope that was okay for you. I think we managed to get through it over here. I hope so. Do let me know. I did keep it quite gentle today. I hope that was all right for you. I try and mix it up so you get a mix of um, uh, stretches. Sorry, my dog's just come in. I just need to go. <laughs> Thank you. So I get a mixture of, uh, so you get a mix of kind of stretch and mobility work, but nothing too energetic. We will get back to doing some more energetic workouts soon uh, when the weather gets a little bit cooler. But let me know uh, what you thought. Okay, and I'm going to go into some hellos today. Um, all right, so we've got, oh, we've got a group with us. Uh, so there's a group here, Bridget, Teresa, Kathy, Laura, Shari, Jane and Anna from Portland, Oregon. Hello, ladies. Lovely to have you here. Uh, apparently, you've been doing my Pilates two to three times a week since COVID. Well, it's so nice that you stopped by to say hello. Uh, and I saved you and your bodies. Oh, that's lovely to hear. Well, look, thank you so much. For coming today, your first time joining me live. I really hope you enjoyed it today. As you know, I try and give you a mix of stuff. So if there's anything special you ladies would like, there you go. I see you've just come up, Bridget. Hi, Bridget. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Uh, yes, it's great to have you here as well. Uh, so yeah, lovely to have you. And this um, session now, I do every Monday live at this time, especially for everybody on the other side of the pond who maybe can't make my early mornings in the UK, because I know it'd be very early for you. But it's lovely to have you here. So hello to you all, ladies. Uh, Linda Verney Thompson, hello, Linda. You've got a question saying, should the hips be forward of the ankles when doing the standing part of this? Oh, I don't understand that question. Sorry. I'm just going to have a look. It's not your fault, Linda. I can't read my husband's writing. Um, so I will go through and have a look at that one. Uh, so hips in line. That's a very good question, actually. So when we're doing standing, we are, uh, I get what you mean about whether the hips are in line when we're rotating, presumably. Um, so this align with the ankles. Sorry, I don't understand what the question is. I'm going to have to read it on the chat and then I'll come back to you. All right, so I'm going to go down through the chat. Patty Smith, hello, Patty. Lovely, lovely, lovely to have you here. 
Patty says, I'm so sorry about your heat wave. May it cool down soon. I can't wait to see you, Rachel. Oh, it's lovely to see you too, Patty. Yes, it really is. I know people, I know over in the States, a lot of you have much higher temperatures than us in the UK. And I feel I can say this with some authority, having lived in the States and having traveled all around the world in different temperatures and humidity, when it gets hot in the UK, it is incredibly humid and uncomfortable. We don't get a dry heat, we get a very damp heat, which is very oppressive. So it often feels much hotter than the actual temperature gauge tells us. We're also, because we are a very old country and we have a lot of old buildings, we don't have air conditioning installed in a lot. Majority of houses do not have air conditioning. Um, and I know in a lot of hot countries, having lived there, it's sort of standard to have air con, you know, whether it's a portable or a built into your home. We don't have that either. So for a day like today, I'm in a converted garage where there are uh, two doors and a window, all of which I have to keep closed because of the noise, because there is a road outside and the temperature can go up very, very quickly. So I'm looking now, and the temperature is 36 degrees in here at the moment. Uh, as soon as we finish, I should put the, I've got a little portable air con <laughs> that we bought at the weekend, that will go back on. But it does get very, very oppressive. So we do have to be a little bit uh, careful. Uh, but anyway, anyway, I'm wittering on, aren't I? Hello to Cheryl in Virginia. Hello to you, Cheryl. Thank you very much for your donation. Cheryl says, gosh, Rachel and Kerwin, your heat wave sounds terrible. I hope that you and Boo are doing okay. Thank you, Cheryl. Yes, our little doggy is suffering a little bit in the heat as all the dogs, all the animals are over here. They've actually closed the zoos uh, here in the UK because it is that hot and that's to protect the animals as well as the staff and I saw a lovely picture in the paper the other day that they've been making uh, fruit ice lollies uh, for all the animals in the zoos like the monkeys and all that kind of stuff to try and keep them cool in this weather so we're all being as careful as we possibly can so thank you very much uh, Cheryl for that uh, oh Patty you're in Portland oh you must catch up and say hello to Bridget yes uh, and you've been with me a couple of years as well. Well, we've got a whole gang out there in uh, Portland, Oregon. So lovely, lovely to know that. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Lily Mars. Hello, Lily. How are you doing? Lily says, hello, Rachel and Kerwin and all my Pilates buddies. I've missed a few live sessions. It's nice to be with you all today. A lovely afternoon, evening on the Costa del Sol. I'm out on my balcony. Oh, that sounds blissful, Lily. Yeah, unfortunately for us, we don't have much of a breeze right now. So we're kind of staying in a little bit with the blinds down. Uh, but it's lovely to hear that you're enjoying the sunshine and it's not too hot for you. Uh, Suda Pinto says, be careful in this heat, Rachel and Pilates buddies, especially those in Europe. At least we have AC in the US. Yes, makes heat bearable. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sue. You're quite right. Um, yeah, the AC, I think it might be something that in the UK we're going to have to start doing now because if the world is just going to continue to get hotter and hotter, we're definitely going to have to make sure we uh, accommodate that and prepare a little bit better uh, for, for ourselves. Lily, I'm just reading you saying thank you. You speak for all of us when you say thank you for buying an air conditioning unit for Boo. Yeah, Boo really needs it because our little dog, she's a wild fox terrier, so she's got two coats. And although we have her clipped to be quite short, it's really, really hot. In fact, I saw a post, I think it was on Twitter the other day, about warning people about taking their dogs out in London on the pavements because obviously pavements are concrete and they get so hot. We don't take Boo out on a pavement when it's this hot because it burns their paws. And they said, try putting on a fur coat and taking your shoes off and then going outside and see how it feels for you. And I thought, yeah, that's exactly what it's like. So if you are in the UK, just remind all your friends with pets to please take care of them, keep them off the pavements, keep them on grass, only take them out 
late at night, early in the morning, all that stuff. That's what we're doing. In fact, my husband, uh, changing the subject slightly, but my husband took Kerwin, uh, my husband Kerwin took Boo for a walk this morning and he bumped into so many people because everyone's taking their dogs out really, really early now because of the heat. Uh, yes, yeah, so there was a little dog party at 6 a.m. this morning where we are. Anyway, going down the chat, uh, let's see who else we've got here today. Um, Jane Saunders. Hello, Jane. Jane says, cloudy here in North Yorkshire. I hope you're a little bit cooler, Jane. Lovely to have you here indeed. Kim B. Hello, Kim B. Who says, good morning from Bellingham in Washington, where it's nice and cool. Yay. I'm glad to hear that, Kim. I hope it stays cool for you. Uh, lovely. Um, Lily Ma says, I've started doing live streams for my ukulele group for the summer. Rachel was the inspiration. We don't meet in person until the autumn. Well, that's a great idea, Lily. Uh, I'm actually taking, I'm going to be here with you guys next week, but I take August off my other teaching commitments so that I can get a bit of a rest. Uh, and also in this heat, uh, less is more, I think, with the Pilates. So what I would say to you all, if you are in really hot weather, is keep up your exercise, but obviously adapt it, <coughs> excuse me, adapt it to suit the temperature. So I'm recommending if you're in the heat wave that you do between 10 and 30 minutes of stretch and flexibility work, just like we did just now, because it'll be very effective, but it won't raise your heart rate up. Uh, one of the things that we do have to be careful of with in a heat wave is the heat puts more pressure on the heart. All right. It's much harder just breathing, all that kind of stuff. So you don't want to be doing exercise that's going to boost your cardio level. You want to kind of avoid that for now and do mobility, work, stretches, flexibility, that kind of stuff. OK. Um, all right. So I'm going to whiz down the chat and see who else is here. Rona Stevens. Hello, Rona. Lovely to see you. Thank you very, very much uh, for your donation. Much appreciated. Paula Gabe. Hello, Paula, who's in Albuquerque. Hello to you, Paula. I hope you're staying nice and cool over there. I want to say hello to Nilka Edgy Edgy Pat. Chioko, I still get your surname wrong, don't I? But Nilka, hello, lovely to see you here. I'm glad you're back. Um, Nilka says, need this workout now. My upper back is hurting. Yes, yeah, so this was a really good one today for working the upper back. What happens with the upper back is because we all spend a lot of our time forward over computers our posture changes, our head goes forward, and all of this strains our neck, strains our shoulders, and also strains and overstretches the upper back. So what we did today was rotational work to release tension in the back and the spine, and then movements and extension, which is obviously taking you the opposite way to where you would normally go. So hopefully you're feeling a lot easier in your neck and your shoulders now, I hope so. If it felt good, Remember to bookmark it, add it to your favorites, and come back and do it again, okay? Uh, SW says, hello, Pilates friends. Just did Friday's workout, and I'm going to do this one later. Yeah, this is a perfect one to combine with the one I just did on Friday. You can't miss it because I'm deliberately wearing the same outfit, so you can find the matching workout for this one. Okay, Linda Verney Thompson. Hi, ah, I've got to your question. Hello, Linda. So Linda says, hi, Rachel. I shall try this in the morning when it's cool. And my question is, should the hips be forward of the ankles when doing the standing part of this or in line with the ankles? So, okay, so hips should be in line with the ankles pretty much. Um, so let me show you a little demo just so you can see. Let me go back so you can see my ankles. So standing posture, a lot of us have, now my standing posture, I tend to stand like this, which is not, not good, okay? It just means it's, it's just the way I stand when I'm lazy, and we all have a way that we kind of stand, right? So when you're doing your neutral position, the best way to find where your positioning is with the hips is to rock the weight forward, and you'll feel your hips are now forward. Can you see? Forward of my ankles. 
Then you're going to pull in, rock the weight back, and you can see the back of my ankles. All right. And then you're going to find the point somewhere in between. It's where you want to feel equal weight in the toes and in the heels. And as you can see now, my hips are pretty much above my ankles, and that's where you want to be. So I hope that helps you, Linda, with that stance. That's our kind of standing neutral position. And remember, everyone, neutral means your spine is almost, is in its natural shape. And for a lot of us, we have uh, ways that we stand or we stand on one hip or as I was showing you, stand with our hips forward or our hips back. It's about correcting yourself. So if you do get the opportunity to just practice that in front of a mirror so you can actually see what's going on because what a lot of us find is you feel, you think, you feel that your position is correct and it's not until you look in a mirror that you realize that what you're feeling is not actually what's going on. And this is about proprioception. So that's teaching with the brain, teaching the body the position you want it to be in. Okay, and we all do it. I do it. I grew up doing it because obviously I was a dancer. And when you dance, you spend your whole entirety of time in front of a mirror correcting yourself. And Joseph Pilates, he worked with a lot of dancers, and I think he probably picked up a lot of that, his kind of method from the way dancers are. It's all about the being very particular about your movement, your position, where every hand uh, gesture is, where the head is, whatever it may be. So if you do get the chance to do things in front of a mirror where you can see your posture, please do do that because it will really help. Okay, so just going down the chat, Jane S says, as a 65-year-old, that was a good workout. I'm really pleased to hear it, Jane. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, CT says, I came in the last three minutes. I see you have a 12-minute video that I'll be trying. Yes, indeed. I've got all different links of video CT. Uh, so for you and for everyone, depending on how you're feeling, I have a playlist that's 10 to 20 minutes. So that's nice and short if you just want to get a quick workout in or a little bit of mobility. Have a look at that playlist. Then I've got a 20 minute to 40 minute, which is where a lot of my videos are because obviously my lives are mostly 30 minute videos. Uh, and then I've got some longer ones as well with a 50 minutes or an hour if you've got time to do those as well. And then if you want to do just do things that are aimed at seniors, so I class senior as 65, 70 plus. A lot of the time it depends really on your fitness because you can be 65 and fit and you can be 65 and have very, very debilitating arthritis. So I call it seniors because it's a more gentle form of working out. I will class today as suitable for seniors as well. Uh, so if you want to do a gentle workout, do go and look at that playlist. Uh, okay, uh, Sue DePinto says, smart idea, matching outfits, makes it easy to get the full body stretch session. Yeah, you know what, Sue, I only just thought about that just before the workout and I whizzed out of the room to go and change. Uh, Jane Sorder says, thanks, Rachel, that was lovely. Daisy in New York City, hello, Daisy, says, this was a lovely stretch and exactly what I needed. Well, I'm really pleased to hear that, Daisy. I'd imagine it's pretty hot in NYC right now as well. Uh, Millie E, hello to you, Millie. Lovely to have you here. Millie says that was perfect for this hot weather. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Johnson says, funny question to good mood. Are you ticklish? If so, where? What a funny question. Sarah, am I ticklish? Uh, yes, I think I am ticklish. Not as much as I used to be, funnily enough. That generally, well, not ticklish really, but I don't like anybody touching me around my abs. Uh, <laughs> that's where I'm a little bit ticklish. So there you go. Calva M says, hello and thanks for that, Rachel. Perfect heat wave workout, a mere 39 degrees here in the south of France. Goodness me. Can't stay for the chat today, but I did really enjoy this session. Thank you, Calva. 
Uh, Lily Ma says, I have trouble following the combined standing and mat workouts because I can't see the laptop from a standing position. Oh, well, this wasn't hard to follow, though. Thanks for the clear instruction. Thank you, Lily. Yeah, I know it's a bit difficult, isn't it? And I know some people have uh, trouble when they're transitioning because you can set your laptop up for standing and see. And then when you lie down, you can't see it. So I know that's a little bit tricky, uh, but I'm glad that you could hear everything okay and it made sense. Uh, Cheryl from Virginia says, it's totally illogical, but these live sessions fly by so much faster than the save videos and I can make myself work harder. Makes no sense. But so grateful for these Monday live sessions. You know what, Cheryl? I totally hear what you're saying because it's the same for me. When I'm teaching live, it goes so much faster than when I'm recording a video. When I'm recording a video, it feels like I'm doing twice the amount of time to what I'm actually doing. But I think for all of us, because we all know it's live, I'm really here, you're really there. There is an element of adrenaline and excitement and it kind of makes you kind of go with it so much more. And I think it's also, yeah, it's the fact it's live, isn't it? But I'm really, really glad you enjoy these live sessions. Uh, we're starting to build our community. So we had about 150 people taking the class live today. So Cheryl and everyone else watching, new ladies, that's Bridget, Teresa, Kathy, Laura, Shari, Jane, and Anna. If you know anyone else who might want to join in, Patty Smith, if you know anyone else that might want to join, please do share that I now do this video, especially for everyone in the States, direct and live from the UK every Monday at this time. Let's try and get our community a little bigger because it'd be really great to have like a thousand of us all working out together. Yeah, it'd be wonderful. So if you know anyone, please share, please try and get them involved. That would be absolutely wonderful. Uh, Rob, hello, Rob. Rob says, hi, many thanks for another great workout. Just had problems moving the shoulder back without them lifting as well. Is there any exercise to help with this? I would say, Rob, uh, the best thing to do with these sort of shoulder mobility, it is really difficult, is just to bring your arms lower. When you get your arms lower, you can kind of focus on the lower part of the trapezius. So what you may have is the trapezius muscle starts here. Let me just turn around, Rob. And it goes in a triangle down to here. And where we tend to have the weakness is this lower part. So anything you can do where you're drawing the muscles down and together, you want a sense of everything going down and then squeezing. You're also using your rhomboids, which are the muscles in between the shoulder blades. That's what I would recommend. And to be honest, Rob, all those exercises we did today, they're the ones you need to keep practicing. The more you do it, the more it will get into here because a lot of it's got to come from the mind. Joe Pilates, he was very, very uh, much a believer in mind mastering the body. And I did a little bit of writing about him uh, recently, and he studied Eastern and Western uh, philosophy and exercise. And his belief, I mean, this is going back to the 1920s when he was a boxer and, and a fitness instructor. He was very particular about using the mind to master the body. So what I would say, Rob, is repeat, 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 repeat. And eventually your body will suddenly one day just get it. And then you'll think, oh, right, yeah. And you'll really feel it happening. It's what happens with a lot of people. Suddenly, you've been doing it for ages, and suddenly your body just starts to really integrate the movement, and then it becomes plain sailing after that. So just keep going, Rob. You're doing really well. It's great to have you here. Rowan Stevens says, thank you. Lots of clicking around the neck and shoulders. All right, Ronus, that's definitely one for you. I hope my clicky neck wasn't uh, too loud, but I was getting it as well, which is just a sign that you really are releasing tension. So well done, Rona. That might be one for you to bookmark uh, to do again. Robin, hello, Robin. Robin says, thanks, Rachel. I'm going to get my husband to try the shoulder neck exercises. He's on the computer all day, and I'm sure they'll help him. Yeah, they really 
really will, uh, Robin. Yeah, try and get him to do that. The other one, Robin, for him, I can't remember if I mentioned it the other day, uh, but the other one that would be really good would be the standing Pilates for forward head posture. It's absolutely brilliant for anyone who spends a lot of time on the computer. You do it all standing against a wall and the wall really helps you with your posture and getting your head into the right position. So great to hear. Uh, Cheryl Matz, hello Cheryl Matz, says I enjoy the Pilates classes so much. Always a sauna in Louisiana on the Gulf during the summer months. Oh, my goodness. Yes, indeed, Cheryl. Well, I hope you managed okay today. And lovely for you to stop by and say hi. Thank you very much. Beverly Moreland. Hello, Beverly. Lovely to have you here. Beverly says, first time here. I have a lot of neck and shoulder pain. Thank you. Beverly, I really hoped that helped you today. Yeah, just a little note for anyone who has shoulder pain. If you find the shoulder pain kicks in when you lift your arm above shoulder height, don't lift your arm any higher. Because obviously, I don't know you all personally, and I don't know your bodies, and I can't see your bodies. So I can't ascertain if there's something going on more than wear and tear. So the golden rule from me to you is if you feel pain in an exercise, that's not a stretch, but pain, then that is something you need to look into. If you feel a pull, as in it's stretching you slightly, and it's a bit of a challenge, that's generally an okay place to be. And if you feel any clicking, that is also absolutely fine, unless you feel pain. And again, if you feel pain, then you need to go and investigate what that pain is about. If it's just clicking, that's totally fine. All right. Um, Okay, so going down Cheryl Matz. Cheryl says, my physical therapist said I need to continue strengthening the core. Hurricane cleanup injury. Oh my goodness, Cheryl. These classes have been perfect for me. Cheryl, I'm so glad to hear that. And yes, all these classes, even if I don't mention core, we are always using it because we're doing our breathing and we're doing our body awareness. So even just pulling your abdominals in is working your core. So I'm really glad to hear that, Cheryl. And I hope you continue to get better uh, post your injury there. Uh, Linda, I got the thumbs up. That's great. Rob, thank you very much indeed for the donation. And Rob says, many thanks for your help with my query. That was great. Works well. Really glad to hear that. All right, lovely people. I'm going to go. It's so nice to have you here today. Remember, I'll be back the same time next week with another workout. Hopefully it will be cooler next week. If you hadn't had a chance to do it, do go and do my workout from Friday. That's the same outfit and it's stretching for the lower half of the body, the hips, the shoulders, etc. Uh, and I'll be back this Friday with another workout. I don't know if Boo wants to come up for Lily Mars. I'm just going to get my little dog. She's very hot, but she does like to say hello. <laughs> there she is. It's my little doggy. She's going to get a nice little... Uh, bowl of cold water now. But thank you to everyone for watching. Do take care. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. All right. So take care, stay cool. And we'll see you soon. Bye for now. Can you say goodbye, boo-boo? Yes. Bye-bye.